And we're back. Day 47. Let's continue right where we left off. Finish putting water down in the bottom. And I need to start planting and finish this little hole in the wall. So, but I have plans for all that. And you'll see. That's it. Formulates. So let's see, I was talking about balancing, right? Balancing's a, uh, something I always wanted to learn, I need to try it myself and ever, if I ever get around to working on the games I always wanted to make for myself that I never have, maybe I'll uh, finally learn some balancing techniques and I'll be a little more aware of that situation and how to get it to relate to things. Uh, I've changed the music. Uh, this music is with an orchestral piece because I was uh, stopping by to watch some YouTube videos while I was uh, processing the last one and uh, I was watching the uh, the Assassin's Creed trailer, the new one, and uh, they had that uh, group group individual uh, calls himself Woodkid, which his name is, I don't know, it escapes me, but it's uh, an individual artist or band name for a, um, a movie director, uh, Luciano something, I don't know. but uh, he's branching out in the music and he's going to be releasing an album sometime soon. But uh, so the single piece from that, that uh, trailer that's famous is called Iron. And it's got this real rhythmic, earth-sounding beat to it. And it's just, it's very, it's, it's, it's a carnal song. It's got a lot of power and strength to it. Oops. And it just sort of got me in that orchestral mood. Um, the artist today, uh, Stefano Targa, is not obviously that kind of artist. It's not it, or even remotely the same kind of sound. It's actually... The music actually reminds me quite a bit of uh, Yanni, um, which was a, uh, he's a uh, modern classical composer. I say modern as in he uses, he's living, <laughs> for one, but uh, he's, uh, he uses a lot of like symphonic, sy like synthonics, uh, you know, he uses uh, like artificial synth tunes and he just embraces all sorts of, you know, modern media in his classical compositions. So it's interesting to listen to. Uh, it's not for everybody, uh, especially if you're like one of those die-hard classical has to be classical orchestral composing music. But uh, it, it it's it's got its own little flavor that I like. So, but I like lots of types of music. I mean, my my musical library ranges all over the place. It's got everything in the world in it. Uh, well, not like every literally everything, but I mean genre styles. I've got. A little bit of everything, probably somewhere. So, and then uh, listening to Jamindo that I've been using to uh, find all the music for these Let's Plays have really broadened my views of music. Like, uh, there's a lot more now that I can choose from when it comes to my selection of what kind of music I want to listen to. And that's really great. I enjoy having that option because there's never enough music, and there's like so much really great free music out there. People that just, they love music and all they want to do is put it out and share it with everyone. And let's see, I'm trying to get a placement here. I want to build some pillars to put some lanterns on. Or lanterns. Why do I always call them lanterns? They're torches. Someday I'm going to figure that out. But, uh, I need to uh, one, two, Nice. And start to. Okay, let's do the other side. Yeah. So there's lots of lots of bad games. There's lots of great games. A uh, a friend of mine is replaying Final Fantasy VII, and uh, we. Comparing tactics, like, um, I'm very die-hard in, uh, 
with my Final Fantasy play style. Like I um Ah, fuck, I've got these in the wrong spot. Uh, I, a lot of people just play the game and they get through the game, but I'm a very completist and, uh, I don't know if you would say, like, hardcore. I, I've never considered myself a hardcore gamer, but I'm very much a, uh, a diehard gamer. Like, not quite casual, more than casual, but less than hardcore. I would call it Die Hard. Does that work? I don't know. Maybe Die Hard is more hard than, than Hardcore. Anyways. <laughs> call it Bruce Willis and ask. What's the difference? Um, but, uh, like, he was talking about levels and the amount of time it takes and stuff. And I was mentioning how uh, when I play, I, I don't excessively level, but I do level more than is required to get to the end. Like, I, uh, I'm assuming most people, that I, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody that, uh, I give these links to has already played Final Fantasy VII, but, uh, like, I'll play through Midgar, and, like, I remember my very first time playing, I spent, like, 30 hours in Midgar, but that was, you know, my very first time, and I'm out of wood. Great. Uh, so that was, you know, an exception to everything, but I generally still spend about... 20 hours, I'd say, in Midgar, and I'm generally, you know, late 20s, maybe even level 30 by the time I leave, and that's a little extreme for some people, it's like, that's just a lot of leveling, uh, especially in that area, but um, I like it, I mean, I prefer to put in that little extra initial investment, and by doing that, it makes everything else easier down the line. Um, I kind of wonder if it goes back to the old, uh, my old Boy Scout days and the, uh, the old Be Prepared motto. It's like, I've always been a fan of preparation. Like, I believe, like, you'll see, even when I'm making these videos, I generally try to have my supplies already ready. I go harvest things before I even start. And, uh, my motto in, uh, Fossey 11 was always, um, it's a derivative of a military motto called, uh, I think it's called the seven P's in the military, but uh, I always called it the five P's is the way I was taught it, which is proper preparation prevents poor performance. And I think there's a few extra adjectives in there in the, uh, the military version. But uh, I think there's like one version that has even 11 P's, and it's just ridiculous. But uh, it's, I really believe in the idea of going that extra mile at the beginning and just making sure you're set up for generally anything. I mean... If you go that extra distance in the beginning and lay down the groundwork, whether it's reading an instruction manual, uh, reading a strategy guide, looking up um, diagrams, schematics, I mean, just taking that extra moment and making the game more than just a game, life in general, just anything you're doing, if you spend that time to go that extra mile, go the distance, learn the basics, and it'll improve everything. Like, there's so much you can do with your life. I say do with your life. I mean, so much more you can accomplish, so much simpler if you just took that very first step first. Like, that, that initial planning. If you do that initial planning first, it can, it can change everything. I mean, not everyone needs that initial planning. Not, I mean, some people are great at just, you know, impromptu, wing it, let's just go. But, uh, I like it. I mean, I'm a big fan of, oops, um, just that extra little mile, that distance covered that makes everything easier. So, yeah, I level excessively sometimes, and, uh, I plan excessively. I like to be... I guess it's a control thing, like, it's nothing like being in control, and planning ahead allows you to have control, like, you, it gives you that edge that lets you say, yeah, I know what's coming, and I can deal with it, and it's not necessary to survival all the time, or, it's getting dark again, but it's just one of those things, you know, I like being prepared, knowing what to expect. 
Uh, not that I mind surprises, I just don't like to be caught off guard to the point where I can't anticipate. And well, that would run if you anticipate it's not a surprise. But I mean, I don't want to be caught to the point where I'm unable to cope. It's like a little bit of being caught off guard is relatively harmless, but it's being unable to cope completely with scenarios that arise is just bad for your life. Uh, whether it's your, you know, your gaming habits or otherwise, it's just not the best way to go about things. Maybe that's excessive. I don't know. Do I run all the, uh, the fun out of my life by taking out the random chance? Maybe. I don't know. It's an idea for discussion in itself. If you haven't figured out, I am tunneling into my house because it will be, uh, my facility, my garden here will be completely enclosed. I don't want to uh, have to come outside to harvest my plants. This way I can just do everything from the safety of my home. I mean, that is kind of the, the ultimate goal, I think, in Minecraft is to get so well off that you can just survive that the whole point of exploring becomes simply for the sake of exploring. How did you get in there? Oh my god. Little friggin' green turd. Giant exploding penis. <sighs> I need to put more torches down there. They're not, he's not supposed to be there. I found a skeleton down there earlier, uh, and I thought I put enough torches to prevent it, but apparently... They're still spawning. At least it's just one mob and not like a horde of mobs. So there's like, not massive darkness, but there's enough down there for uh, things to cause me trouble. So, let's see. Let's fill it in. No one will ever know the difference. <laughs> no one will ever know. Let's see, I want to class. I'm gonna kill that bastard. I think yeah, let's see. Um I'm gonna finally make a bow and get rid of this thing. Little curve sticks and some spider webs. Spider webs, best string in the world. Stronger than steel. Which is probably why your bow never ever breaks. Shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with the bow, don't worry if you miss your mob. I mean, as long as you uh, don't... Uh, so you can pick up arrows that you miss. You can't pick up mobs out of arrows out of mobs you hit, obviously, because they disappear. But like, if you miss and they just go in the wall or on the floor, you can pick them up. Uh, you can't pick up the enemy's arrows, which kind of sucks, because sometimes those skeletons just leave massive amounts of arrows. So, alright, let's see here. I need to build out to that spot. Huh. Yay. All right, but now I can seal in this wall. A yeah, little fun mechanics of the game. It is kind of nice you get to keep your arrows at least. Uh, there we go. I suppose I don't have to fill up these corners, but I've been doing it anyways. Just sort of a. Uh, that's the way they do it, because that's the way it needs to be done, kind of thing. Like I said, it just, I'm a big fan of planning and the right ways, the way it should be. A lot of the way it should be. There's a lot of should be's that aren't filled out properly in life. But I'm a little more cynical and anal retentive than some people. <laughs> Eh, 
and out of wood. So for all intents and purposes, it's done. I need to start right there. There we go. Don't need to go back out there anymore. So yeah. Um, after I complete this and get it planted, um, it will take quite a bit of time to fully plant, like, uh, I'll have to harvest crops a while before I have enough wheat, because I don't have enough seeds right now to fully plant everything. But once I do, I can easily go back and, um, get the rest. Like, every time you harvest a wheat plant, you are, like, once it's fully grown anyways, you're guaranteed at least your wheat and up to three units of seeds off each harvest. Uh, but that's zero to three, so sometimes you occasionally don't get any seeds, and that kind of sucks. But generally you get, you know, at least one seed back, so you at least strike even most of the time. I am using the hoe, which is uh, two sticks and two blocks. Uh, it's tilling the soil, is what it does. You see here where it got dark? Uh, that's because the, wa the soil is now saturated with water. There's one in the corner over there, too. Um, it's not necessary for soil to be saturated, but it certainly doesn't hurt the development process of your wheat. Uh, it'll almost, if it's right next to water, it will get saturated eventually anyways. And uh, after you till the land, you don't want to walk on it like I'm doing here. Of course, this is really taking longer than normal. But um, if you walk on it, here, let's just jump, jump, jump. Come on. There you go. See, you lose your till, which is precisely why you don't want to walk on your garden. Because you'll, if you until the soil, it'll unplant the seeds. And chances are you may lose your seeds. Now, if you crouch, it's like tiptoeing, so you're not going to damage things. So you can walk over it freely. You have to walk on it. That's also why I make my rows and set up the way I do. Like I've built uh, farms before where I would put the water underneath the dirt because it would still get hydrated that way, but it wouldn't. Um, you know, that way you could have like a whole field of wheat and it'd just be water underneath. You wouldn't have to see the water or interact with it. But this way, at least, you know. Um, I gotta build a platform there because I just I got a glass like the one above it so that it'll match and it'll be better. I said I'm also I'm gonna the next video will be me building a uh, mushroom farm so that should be enjoyable. Has a totally different methodology for how you build because <laughs> regular farms are all about light and water and mushrooms are about neither, <laughs> which makes it interesting to build because you have to build them in darkness and. Who wants a uh, dark mushroom farm? Like this monster spawning waiting to happen, right? So there are some tricks. Uh, it's not as hard as it used to be anyways, but we're going to go ahead and call it done. I will continue to harvest, and that will be the end of the farm. So that's goodbye, and I will see you next time.